how barbering is an art. It, it is an art. We're pretty much trans transforming someone's head. We're creating different gradients um, from skin to, to full coverage being covered on the, on the scalp and on the back and sides. So that's what we're doing. We're essentially building a shape on a round head. I mean, we're just, we're, we're building. It's, we're like taking Lego and building something, right? My name is Mitch Bright, and I'm barber and proprietor of Abel's on Queen in downtown Kitchener at the Wolper Hotel. We as barbers, we specialize in, in shortcuts. It doesn't have to be men, it doesn't have to be women's, but shortcuts is where people can go and, and, and get, the, get those done. It all kind of started for me just being a kid in high school, playing music for, for fun. Um, eventually becoming not so fun and being more of like a full-time thing. Um, playing music, being on the road, you know, we need, to, we need to look good, we need to get our hair cut. Trying to find the right um, shop or salon to go to, to to get our hair cut was, was always a bit of a struggle. Um, and with my mom being a hairdresser my entire life, it was always easy just to have her kind of, you know, buzz my head or, or do whatever. Um, but one of my friends asked me if, you know, where, where can we get a haircut? And I was like, well, my mom cuts hair. I could probably do it. Um, and that was probably about like eight-ish years ago. Um, and then eventually started taking it a little bit more seriously. Uh, went to, to hair school um, and studied cosmetology because there really is no barbering um, schools in Ontario. So I kind of took it upon myself after bouncing around at a couple different shops that it was time for me to, to travel and learn. And Europe, I find, has more of a bigger barber uh, culture. Um, and they're really great with education. And just like sitting in barber shops, like I would just go to a shop and say, hey, I'm from Canada, I'm a barber, I really want to learn. I'm going to sweep hair for a couple hours and just pick your brain and, and maybe get a haircut. I had an opportunity to, to rent out a small uh, space to operate one chair. And I did that for about two and a half years, and I slowly started to watch it grow until it just got kept growing and growing and growing to the point where I was booked out six weeks to to do a haircut. And like, I'm just cutting hair. I'm not saving lives. I'm literally just making people feel and look good. And I had an opportunity to take over my mom's old salon um, and was left with an empty shell to kind of make my own. So I basically took my one chair shop and grew it into a six chair shop and was able to hire on a bunch of my friends and, uh, and, and just teach people how to, how to cut hair, be that mentor for the people that uh, really wanted to, to get better at, at cutting hair. Um, so I was really fortunate and very lucky to have my mom be sort of like my, my mentor, my number one cheerleader, um, because I definitely wouldn't be able to, to be in this space today if it wasn't for her. The big thing that, that I really cared about this shop was just the history behind it. This space is a uh, around 130 years old. Al Capone has apparently, allegedly gotten his haircut here. And being located at such a historic um, space in downtown Kitchener and, and keeping this legacy going of, uh, of the, the old school barbershop, but just kind of adding that contemporary um, sort of setting to it and that luxury setting. We've been really fortunate enough to be able to take over and, and uh, continue on with the, the barbershop at the Walper Hotel, the legacy. In our shop specifically, we like to focus on quality over quantity. We could easily pump out more haircuts, but that doesn't really um, sit right with me. People's time is also very valuable. So if we're charging a premium for you to come get your haircut, uh, we wanna make sure that we're doing every little thing we could possibly do to make it right 
um, and not having our customers feel rushed. This is the time for someone to come in, sit down for 45 minutes to an hour, and, and just take care of themselves. There was a huge resurgence in, in the barbershop sort of culture. Um, I feel like in the early 90s is when it really started to kind of go, um, or kind of just disappear, really. Um, the Ontario College of Trades had kind of just uh, amalgamated cosmetology and barbering licenses together, and that was kind of the end of, of barber licensing. Um, but it is starting to make a comeback. It's becoming a lot more popular. It's kind of becoming cool. It's actually funny, like when I was in hair school, I, I taught my class our men's haircutting um, program, which was like a day long out of a six month course. So they really don't touch a whole lot on men's haircutting. Um, the schools have been starting to shift a little bit. Um, they'll offer a little bit more training on barbering, which has been really great. Um, they'll have a lot of uh, guests like barbers or stylists come in. Um, so I try to regularly go to the school and teach a you know, teach an hour or two class to at least give people a bit of a, of a base um, to work on um, and just to be able to grow from there. But it's hard. They don't, they don't really teach you anything. You know, the, the most that they taught us in school was put shaving cream on a balloon and try not to pop it. But it's not really realistic. You got to really practice and put in all the hours and, and hours and upon hours upon hours of just learning how to properly shave. And I'll admit there's there's times where I feel like I could improve my uh, my shaving abilities and I try to take classes and watch other people, um, uh, uh, other team members really at, uh, at Ables here to learn how to get better at shaving. I mean, with shaves, it's all, it's all different. You really need to make sure you're looking at the way the hair is growing um, because you never really want to take a single edge blade against the grain. Um, it's always best to go with or across the grain. Um, against will just cause uh, a lot of irritation. Um, but also when shaving a beard, for example, you want to make sure that it, the beard is going to sit nicely on their face. You could, you, if you know, if you cut the, the jawline too high, it might look a little weird. If you cut it too low, it might look like they have a, a, a double chin. So we're really just trying to make sure that we know the shape of our, of our client's head uh, and their face and accommodating to that. Um, but it's more of the experience in the barbershop. You're, you're getting the hot towels, you're getting the shaving cream, you're getting the straight razor shave, the aftershave. There's so much going on during that, that, um, that experience that it really um, is just like a treat, I find. Um, with that though, it, there, there are difficulties to it. Everyone's face, skin, hair is different. Um, so, so some people's skin react better than others. Um, but we just try to work with with each customer's face um, and how we can how we can give them the best uh, the best shave. A lot of times people will think that a, a hot towel shave is you know you're gonna feel like a, a baby face like there's nothing there and that's not often the case um, when you're using a single blade. There's more room for um, uh, for irritation to, to come, especially if you're going like against the grain, for example. Um, at home, if you have five blades and you go against the grain. It's going to be kind of rough and raw, but your, your skin's going to feel baby smooth. With the hot towel shave, it's more, like I said, just an experience of being under the hot towels. And you will feel a little bit of stubble, but you're going to know that it's going to be the best shave for your face, where you're not going to get ingrown hairs, you're not going to get razor bumps, um, and everything's done clean and professionally. I wouldn't say that there's anything that's been groundbreaking that's going to change the way we cut hair. It's a lot of the same tools, combs, brushes, scissors, um, hair clippers. I, I definitely feel like we are, um, you know, sticking with tradition. Uh, however, with all the new sort of um, haircutting techniques that are out there, it's, it's a good mesh between um, traditional barbering, contemporary haircutting. Um, and kind of putting those together to making our own. So in my opinion, the difference between a good barber and a bad barber is a good barber is going to care about their client and want to engage with their client. A bad barber might not want to. There's been a lot of challenges. I mean, uh, you're working with not just yourself, now you're working with, with eight other people. And um, with working with that many people, there, there's bound to be conflict. 
Um, so trying to, to keep everyone happy, to make sure that the, everyone is booked, everyone is making money, everyone is learning, uh, there's products on the shelf. There's a lot, a lot of challenges and a lot of hurdles to get, to get over. Um, I just love digging myself deeper into a bigger hole and doing, you know, adding more work to my, to my plate. There's been plenty of times where I've wanted to throw in the towel. Uh, I feel like as an entrepreneur in general, it's, it kind of fluctuates up and down. It's like things are going good. Oh my God, we're not doing well. Oh, we're good. Never mind. It's just like up and down. Um, so I've really just tried my hardest to um, keep my eye on the prize and just know that whatever um, whatever we go through or whatever I personally have to go through, that it's going to get better. Because I don't work a day in my life, really, especially when I'm working with, with my, my clients and, and my team. Uh, we're just a bunch of friends just hanging out, a lot of good banter making people feel good, uh, it really doesn't get any better than that.